So I am standing in the Willamette Valley of Central Oregon holding a handful of grass that is going to end up in either Asia or the Middle East. And today I'm going to show you how this grass, poke myself in the eye, there, safety first. But today I'm going to show you how this grass gets from this field to countries like Japan, Dubai, Korea, and etc. Now the process obviously starts with a farmer and their hay field. And depending on the type of hay and the end product wanted out of that hay, the process on how it gets harvested is a little bit different. So to make alfalfa hay, grass hay, stuff like that, a swather will come through, mow the field, leave it a nice windrow so that the balers can come through and pick up. This hay is a little different. This was a grain grass, so the first thing that happened was a combine came through and combined the field, taking all the oats and grains and whatever type it was out of it, leaving just the straw behind. Problem is, as you can see, it also leaves it a bit of a mess. It got hot, had to lose a sweater. But up until now, everything has been handled by the farmer that owns the field. But now that all the grains are gone and just the bare straw is left behind, the hay company brings in their equipment to bale and haul away the straw. So this particular hay operation is owned by my buddy Jesse, who you've seen in some previous videos. And Jesse's operation starts with the rake. The head rake operator around here is Jesse's mom. So Jesse's mom rakes the hay and takes all these small piles that are over the place into one nice even windrow right down the middle that the baler can come down and bale up. The next step in the operation is the noisy and dusty one and that is the baler. The baler drives over the top of those windrows, scoops them up, and it will compress all that hay inside of it into a bale that will come out the back. And if I would have been way better at my job, I would have timed this just right to where the bale would have fell on the ground as he went by. Never said I was good at this. I hope you guys appreciated how far I had to chase that thing down to get that shot. We started way over there. Oh, actually, you see the last bale way down there. Huh. Get my steps in today. So this is a stacker. And the stacker is going to come down hit this hay bale, spin it sideways, and then flip it up onto its back right there, which I'm not nearly fast enough to go chase that. So you see then it slides it down, if it wants to slide. There it goes. Comes back down, grabs another one. You get the picture, it's as far as I'm running. So once his stacker is full, he brings it over here and makes a wall. He's gonna back up to that and stand this up without tipping it over. And when they build these, every one of these stacks that you see, of course, you can't see any more from here, they're over there. But each one is one truckload. So that when the trucks come out to the field with the squeeze lift, each truck pulls up to one stack, they load it on that truck, and then the squeeze lift moves on to the next. See, he lets go of it with the clamp and then pulls out from underneath it and he goes off to get some more bales. So we currently have two rakes, three balers, and two stackers running out in this field and they're going to knock it. It's a big field. They're going to knock it out uh, real quick here. So now we're going to jump over to some footage I shot last week of how the bales get hauled out of the field, where they go to, and I know some of you who regularly watch my videos uh, probably saw that footage before, but it's what ties this whole store together to do the complete process beginning to the end, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what's going on out here? You can see all these stacks of hay. The hay squeeze is coming, putting them into these blocks, which he'll stack these up here, loading them on the trucks. The trucks hauls them to the barn where Jesse's actually at with the other hay squeeze where they'll get stored in the barn. And then it's the after the stored in the barn part where this whole operation gets really cool. All right, so this one's got a full load. He's gonna get strapped down, head over to the barn. He's heading over to the next truck. That whole stack is gonna go on that truck. Then that whole stack will go on that truck. Then this truck will come back and grab that stack and they'll just keep moving down the field until they're back at the road. 
then on to the next one. Well, hopefully that shot looked cool. Uh, now we'll go chase down those two trucks over to the barn and see if we can find Jesse. <laughs> so this is one of Jesse's storage barns here, as you can see. Uh, he's got a few of these dotted kind of around the area and uh, they bring the trucks in here which you can't see because the camera just makes it look all white uh, and they unload bring them in here store it here until they're ready to bring them over to the press building which you'll see later where they cut these apart and and press them down and that part is super impressive and where things get really unique around here So for those of you who have never seen a hay squeeze before, you can see steering wheel, gauges, driving like normal. But you notice I'm not driving the steering wheel because over there there's another steering wheel facing the other way <laughs> for when you want to run the forklift end of it. So Jesse, this is Jesse by the way, Jesse's running the squeeze from that side and then when it's time to go down the road to the next bar, which I think this is last truck, and then moving, he just hops over here drive down the road this way. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for that great summary, Jesse. <laughs> you got We're all done here, so you see Jesse going down the road up there. There goes the swather, that's the one that actually mows the hay down. So then we get back here to the hay press facility where the trucks haul in the hay out of the barns and sometimes directly out of the field if there's room. They weigh in on the scale here and then it will get stored either in the building, in the giant hay wall there, or the other giant hay walls out back behind the facility. That is a lot of hay, but not nearly as much as that. That is not a building over there. That is a stack of hay covered in a tarp, and it goes down like twice as far as what you can see here. So as you can see, this truck is full. There's just, there's no room to fit any more hay, and it is only 89,420 pounds, where in Oregon we can actually haul 105,500 pounds on a rig like this which is why they have the hay press facility to condense these bales down, fit more on a truck and actually be able to haul a full weight load. And then that entire two trailers worth of hay there is all gonna fit in one sea container, which makes transportation to the ports and then overseas to its final destination far more efficient. So when the container trucks get back from the port, they can pull right around the backside of the shop here and come right into this line right here and just pull in, unhook their empty trailer, 
and then get to pull right around here and hook up to a loaded one that's been staged by the yard goat. That's the yard goat right there, uh, weighing out a loaded container to get all the weight tags ready to go, and then he'll park it right here. But uh, the trucks can unhook, hook up to their loaded one, pull right up here, and get staged up in line, pointed right out the driveway, ready to go for the next day's run in the morning. So this truck brought its load straight back here to the press building. This is the press building here. And uh, it's gonna get unloaded, all that straw will get stacked right here. And all this is what's going straight into that press tonight. So tonight, this entire stack will be gone and by morning replaced with an entire new one. These trucks haul in constantly and this press runs 24 hours a day. So we are in the hay press building now. It all starts with a forklift loading the blocks onto the shelf here. This feeds them over onto the unstacker. This grabs them lifts up the upper two halves and the bottom two go over in towards the uh, part that pulls all the twine off. So once those bales come from the unstacker, they come in here. This machine pulls the twine off of it. And these poles right here, by the way, we found Jesse. These right here are light beams. So that if anybody crosses the beam to do anything, it shuts the whole machine down. So there's no way someone can reach into the machine while it's running. So that's cutting the bale in half a long way. So we're on the other side now, you see there's more of these light beams. It's just a curtain of light all over this plant. But there's that top half of the bale that got cut off long way. It gets pushed over onto the chain drive. Once the bales are sliced in half, they come off of here, down this chain feed. This is a scale, and then another knife right there. So the press has an inbound scale and an outbound scale that work together, so it's hard to get an accurate weight. So on the out, on the out feed, it weighs it, and if the, even though this is set at 240, and if they're coming out at 260, it tells this one it's off, and it tries to compensate to get the most accurate weight. So this one is cutting them to the weight size, that block right over into here and right there is the actual press that smashes them down which is about impossible to see because yeah it's a big press. So we come around the side over here it's pressing all those into this small little space here which smashed that big bale down into like 12 inches and then this big long cylinder kicks them over there into the into the banding machine that bands them. And then up there is a that's a gate so that's the eject gate, so when the, when the press is pressing, that gate's closed, so the bales aren't trying to come out the paddle. Oh, so that, that's the gate at the yeah, end. Yeah, that's the gate. So, so where that vertical cylinder is, we call that the eject gate. So when, when the bale's being pressed, so like right, right now, there when all that stuff's blowing yeah, out the top because it's being compressed. It's being compressed, and then as soon as the bale's done being pressed, you'll see now the gate's opening, and then it's going to eject the bale out into these paddles. Now we're going to strap those paddles hold it so it can't come apart until the bands get on it. get banded they come over here and get sliced into four different pieces okay. of course on film so you notice everything just stopped it's because Jesse walked through the light beam because this one was wrong at the reject and as soon as he reached in there the whole machine well this part of the machine all just shut down yep and he reached yep. now reset and off it goes Good demonstration of your safety equipment. It works, so we don't have our safety vests on now. This is high-vis green. We're almost matching, it's like army. Hey, he's wearing green, we're wearing green. What's the problem? So here's how they're supposed to come out. So if 
something's yeah. a reject, yep. you can pull it out right here. And a guy can just reach in and grab it. The light beam shuts everything down so he's safe to grab it and get it out. So after they go across the inspection table, it stands the stack upright. Then it'll push it out here. Then it'll run that together to create the block. Now this is where it can go straight up into the wrapping machine or another ram can come out and push this block right out here where a forklift can grab it if you don't want it wrapped or to take it to the other wrapping machine. So then that block is brought out into the shrink wrap machine where it'll end up looking like this. Then they end up on that finishing table where a much smaller squeeze forklift grabs the blocks and either stacks them in the warehouse or brings them over here to the container. Okay, well normally there's container trailers right here that the forklifts are loading, but where's the containers? All loaded, I guess. So obviously in a hay press building, there's a lot of waste hay ends up on the floor and in most all hay presses that is waste. But in this one, it all gets brought over here. Those things actually work like big brooms. Shoved into here, this conveyor belt you can see is running right now. Goes up this conveyor belt, comes all the way to the top to this hopper right here. Goes into a miniature press that presses bales of all the the waste hay, so not the finished product that's going to go for feed. This will get used for animal bedding, erosion control, stuff like that, but that eliminates all the waste hay on the floor or, get, or gives it a purpose. So any hay that doesn't pass inspection comes out here. So this is stuff that's not, that uh, doesn't pass a quality inspection to get shipped out. And uh, if anybody wants to buy that, you'll sell it to them for a super good deal, right? Just yeah, just bring a truck and come get it. We'll load you right up. Yeah. Yeah, all that. If, you, if you're looking for some straw, <laughs> Jesse's got plenty. He's got your name on it. <laughs> and then the final step in the process is those trucks hook onto these loaded trailers and they haul them up to the port where they get set on container ships and go to their various destinations overseas in the Middle East or Asia. And that is how a handful of grass that's not in my hand anymore because it's in those containers gets from the Central Valley of Oregon to the complete opposite side of the world. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I really like doing stuff like this. Is I like learning things. A lot of other people like learning things too. So if you did, let me know. I'd love to do some more of this type of stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.